Near the confluence of three major rivers stands the National Great Rivers Museum in Alton. It's a facility that is reconnecting visitors to the importance of our waterways. Located at the foot of one of the largest lock and dams on the Mississippi River is this museum operated by the U.S. Corps of Engineers. Inside, visitors are taken through a tour of the cultural, ecological, and the industrial aspects of the river, all told through a myriad of interactive displays. When you first come in, you get a welcome message from different people throughout the past of the river that explored the river or had some connection to it. And then you meet a, a Native American that used to live along the river, and a steamboat captain, and a modern day person that uses the river. So we find out what makes a river, how a river is made, and how it works, what the anatomy is. We talk about the, the fisheries, the plants and animals that live along the river, and explore three main ecosystems, the river itself, the floodplain that forms part of the river, and the bluffs along the side of the river. Those are naturalist notebooks where you can choose to look at different animals and plants from that region by flipping through a computer notebook. In other words, you can, can look through a book and they have little interactives where you can turn on a little film clip of different fish or animals and see them in action. We do have an aquarium here with fish in it that, sh that are indigenous to the Mississippi River. And these we call our prehistoric fish in that they were here at the time of the dinosaurs even. And they include this, a sturgeon, a paddlefish, and a gar. Okay, after the natural history, we start looking at the, the cultural history of the river. Right now we're in front of a huge timeline that looks at the river throughout time, from the beginning of time through today, and some of the important historical pieces within that timeline. In addition to showing how the river has influenced people, the museum demonstrates how people have affected the river. This is a model of the confluence of the Mississippi, Missouri, and Illinois rivers. And that model, that type of modeling is used by our St. Louis District engineering folks to show how the water reacts around different structures in the river, such as um, wing dikes and little weirs and it, they find this fairly accurate to help them decide where to put these structures into the river. Right here we have called Surfing the Watershed. Where people can, and it's a little computer display where people can put their zip code into the computer program and it'll show them their watershed where they live or whatever that zip code is. And you can turn off or on different features such as roads and boundaries and things like that and see what a map is of that watershed. These throttles power your towboat's back engines. Right throttle runs the right... One of the most popular exhibits is this pilot house simulator, which uses the same software program for training towboat operators. Right now this gentleman's trying to steer between a couple bridge piers and without running into another barge. And it can be quite challenging because you got to remember these toes are about a quarter mile long and they move very slow and they have very slow reaction times. So however you steer it, it takes a long time for it to go that way and it takes a long time for it to come back wherever you want it to go. There are also displays on water conservation, how locks work, and three times a day there's a tour of the Melvin Price Locks and Dam. It's about an hour-long tour that goes up on the lock and shows how a lock operates and hopefully you'll see a, a tow coming through to see the whole process of, of a lockage. Usually we get about 20 lockages of the large tows every day. Uh, recreational boats may be twice that many. Besides being a good location for viewing barges, each winter the museum attracts bird watchers. During January and February, we have Eagle programs right here in the museum. We welcome people to come by. Across the riverway, matter of fact, there's um, an area called the Riverlands Migratory Bird Sanctuary. And in the trees in that area, we get hundreds of eagles roosting in those trees during the wintertime, mainly because the water is always open and they do their fishing along there. It's here that visitors are reminded of the importance of the river, both economically and ecologically. 
We want them to go home with a better appreciation and awareness of the river, that this river is vital and a working river. If interested in reaching the National Great Rivers Museum, call 877-462-6979 or visit the website listed on the screen.